come to you in the silence I will lift you from all your fear You will hear my voice I claim you as my choice Be still and know I am St. John the Evangelist, welcome to all parishioners and visitors who are joining us to celebrate Pentecost today. Welcome back. In addition, we extend a sincere welcome to all who join us digitally. As we return to holding public masses, our mission is to provide the opportunity for the faithful to attend mass and receive the sacraments and to be able to continue to do so each week. The goal of our guidelines are to create an environment that minimizes risk as much as possible so we can continue to serve each of you in this way. Please adhere to these guidelines with this in mind and please listen to the directions of Father and the ushers when given. Please wear your mask at all times, limiting, limit speaking and refrain from singing. Please remain in your pews, your pew at all times during Mass, except to use the restroom or to exit the church campus. When you exit, 
please use either the chapel north doors or the gathering space doors. In the case you need to re-enter the building again, please use the main church doors. Communion will be distributed at the conclusion of Mass. Father will speak to this more during his announcements. Please follow the prompting of the ushers at that time. Our Mass today is being offered for Ken Jones. Please silence all cell phones and let us pray together the Archdiocesan Prayer for Vocations, which I think I have, so I will be praying it for you. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless this Archdiocese with many priests, brothers, and sisters who will love you with their whole strength and, and gladly spend their entire, entire lives to serve, to serve your church, church and, and to make you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, uh, we come together this Pentecost seeking the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that fire of love that comes from God. Public Masses are now being um, are happening all throughout the archdiocese and we get to worship our God at mass if we so desire it's a very beautiful moment in the archdiocese I also am gravely concerned and ask all of you to pray for um, George Lloyd and the situation uh, around the Twin Cities as well. It's very, very sad. And of course, here at Pentecost, we ask the Holy Spirit to blanket all those in need, all those who are hurting, all those who are angry, to fill them with His peace and His joy and His healing presence. As we move forward into Mass, let us take a moment, as we always do, by first acknowledging our sins and asking the Lord for his mercy.
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed the Paschal mystery to be encompassed as a sign in 50 days, grant that from out of the scattered nations the confusion of many tongues may be gathered by heavenly grace into one great confession of your name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses went up to the mountain to God, Then the Lord called to him and said, 
Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, Tell the Israelites, You have seen for yourselves how I treated the Egyptians and how I bore you up on eagle wings and brought you here to myself. Therefore, if you hearken to my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my special possession, dearer to me than all other people, though all the earth is mine. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. That is what you must tell the Israelites. So Moses went and summoned the elders of the people. When he set before them all the Lord had ordered him to tell them, the people all answered together, Everything the Lord has said, we will do. On the morning of the third day, there were peals of thunder and lightning and a heavy cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. But Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God and they stationed themselves at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was all wrapped in smoke for the Lord came down upon it in fire. The smoke rose from it as though from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. The trumpet blast grew louder and louder while Moses was speaking and God answering him with thunder. When the Lord came down to the top of Mount Sinai, he summoned Moses to the top of the mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
works. Pleasing to God be my theme. I will rejoice in the Lord. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope, we were saved. Now hope that sees is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit, too, comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, on the shine. Look on the poor with love benign, and give your people gifts divine. Come, Spirit, come. Come, be our soul's most welcome guest, endowing us with all the best. Be solace, comfort, and our rest. Come, Spirit, come. Come, Lord, be with us every day. In prayer and rest, at work, at play. Without your help, we go astray. Come, Spirit, come. Come, yes. And give us grace All wrong you wish us to erase All good you call us to embrace Come Spirit, come Come paraclades with gifts descend Through all our life you are our friend Come bring us joys that never end. Come, Spirit, come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. As Scripture says, Rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. He said this in reference to the Spirit, that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no Spirit yet, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia! It is a beautiful moment in the life of our church this weekend, our local church, many churches, dioceses around the nation, around the country, around the world, are opening up more and more in the coronavirus. It has been a very difficult and painful couple of months. I think you would all agree. And many, many parishioners have said to me, how painful it's been not to be able to receive the Holy Communion, the real presence. That at every Mass, the bread and wine become Jesus' body and blood. And today, starting last Wednesday, a daily Mass, parishioners from all around the state and now receive the body and precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is Pentecost. And it's interesting how when I go out to anoint those who are about to die, very close to passing on into the next world, that want to be anointed, the sacrament of healing, the sacrament of strengthening to prepare them for heaven. That at one point during that sacrament, during that liturgy, five, ten minutes long, I will ask the person who is close to death to open their hearts in a very special way and invite the Holy Spirit in. That I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray over them for a few moments and ask the Holy Spirit to fill them with his love, his peace, his joy, to give them strength and courage in placing themselves in God's hands, trust and confidence in his love. And then I'm going to entrust them to our Blessed Mother's Immaculate Heart, but that their part, and I want to invite all of you at home, here at church, to do the same thing. In your heart right now, silently, say over and over and over again, God, come into my heart. And really mean it. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Fill me with your love. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Give me your peace and your joy. Your courage and strength. Your trust and confidence. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Over and over again. It's a great prayer. You can do it anytime. And it's, it's amazing that oftentimes in this moment with that person who is close to passing, They have the wherewithal to understand what's happening and to invite God in sincerely and authentically. In the moment, I experience joy and the Holy Spirit is present in a most powerful manner. 
in the most powerful way. With everything that's happening here in Minneapolis, around the, around the Twin Cities, with the George Floyd tragedy, let us all pray, certainly the Mass, offer it up in some way from our hearts for those who are involved, the police officers, the family, George Lloyd himself, the leadership that we might blanket Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, the power and love of the Holy Spirit. The apostles, after the ascension last weekend we celebrated, they go down into the city and they begin to fast and pray for nine days. They are still cowards. They are still fearful and afraid. And as they pray and fast for nine days and nights, that novena to the Holy Spirit in the upper room, Jesus sends them the advocate. And the Holy Spirit appears in tongues of fire and fills their hearts with authority courage and power. They experience that healing presence and they become courageous. Their ability to now go out into the world and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit becomes real. And they will they will go out into the whole known world of the time and they will preach the good news. They will cast out devils and demons. They will cure the sick, heal the paralytics, raise the dead. They will perform great miracles by the power of God manifest in them and through them. They will even overcome the mighty Roman Empire in about 300 years. But there will be great martyrdoms. Many will have to perish in persecution. But they will remain faithful all the way to the end. And these martyrs, their blood will become the seed of the church. If God is with us, who can be against us? Our job here in this life is to cooperate with God's grace and blessing. To do it his way, not my way. Not Father Tom's way. Not anyone else's way, but God's way. And if we can sincerely work at doing it God's way, his grace and blessing will flow in us and through us throughout the whole world, in our neighborhoods, in our families, in all of our relationships, in our workplaces, everywhere. Pentecost is the great feast that helps us Focus for a time on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like the wind. Huh? It flows where it will, where it may. We're not always sure how it's working, what it's doing. But when we pray and practice our faith, we open our hearts. When we invite the Holy Spirit, Jesus, into our hearts over and over and over again with sincerity and authenticity. We are filled with his joy and his peace.
And now we'll have the renewal of our baptismal promises. Please stand. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask all of you here at church, of course, I ask all of you at home, please, if you can, with conviction, with confidence, with faith, say I do to each one of these questions. And so I ask all of you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. With joy you shall draw water from the springs of endless life. With joy you shall draw water from the living well of God. God indeed is my Savior. I will Dear people, as members of the church, let us pray for each other. Let us pray that the Spirit descends upon everyone in abundance. For the whole church on this day of Pentecost, as the glorified Christ lets fall his promised Holy Spirit, that the strong wind of his coming may surge through the upper room where we have waited to kindle in each of us his holy fire, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lay faithful, commissioned by the Spirit to be a ferment in society for the kingdom of God, that the Spirit's gift of fortitude may make them strong friends of Christ, able to stand up for the demands of justice, life, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing new stirrings in their lives, calls to change and growth, movements of repentance, even earthquakes of divine disturbance, that they may not quench or sadden the loving spirit who awakens within them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us and all peoples of the Twin Cities in the aftermath of the death of George Floyd, that George may find rest, comfort may come to those who grieve, peace may come to hurting communities, 
and prudence may lead to rightful accountability and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that our communion with Jesus in this holy sacrifice may intensify the presence of his spirit in our hearts and spread all around us the sweet fragrance of his gifts and fruits in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jean Conant Winter, Terry Cromie, Lois Cremissino, Gladys Helgeson, Lucy Michelle, and all those on our prayer list, that the Spirit may be an anointing of comfort to them on their pilgrim way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Richard Wagner and all of our beloved dead, that the Lord may send forth his Spirit into their souls so that they may be placed in eternal life as his new creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, out of love for us, you sent your Son, Jesus, to free us from the bonds of sin and death. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, may we be strengthened in faith that we may go and make disciples of all nations. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Offering these prayers spoken, those deep within our hearts unspoken, to our Blessed Mother's Immaculate Heart, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Pour out upon these gifts the blessing of your spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your holy begotten Son. The same Spirit as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her beloved spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Today's second collection will be deposited into our second collection general fund. In part, this outreach fund supports grants to service agencies and St. John's assistance programs. One of the agencies we support with our second collection outreach fund is Teresa Living Center. Teresa Living Center provides transitional housing and support services to women and single parent families who are striving to move from homelessness to self-sufficiency. The families served by Teresa Living Center thank you for your generosity. Thank you so much to all of you, especially those of you at home who chose to give weekly collection money virtually via our secure website or by mailing or dropping it off or dropping off your regular Sunday envelopes in the lock box between the front doors of the parish office. Your generosity has been overwhelming. Next weekend is food collection for the poor. The gathering space will be open from 8 a.m. to noon every day next week, Monday through Friday, for safe drop-off of bags of non-perishables. Please enter and exit safely through the door marked school entrance only. Food items may also be collected at the steps of the church before weekend masses. Please follow all ushers' instructions. Thank you so much to St. Anne's, who has aided us in our live stream recitation of the rosary throughout the month of May. These recordings are always available on our church Facebook page. As I close Mass, you are welcome to be seated or kneel if you are planning to receive communion. If you do not wish to receive communion, please remain standing at that time and the ushers will direct you to the exits. For those of you remaining for communion, when I return, the ushers will guide you through the communion line, maintaining a distance of six feet apart between each household. We will begin with the wings first, followed by the front of the church. Please use hand sanitizer before entering the communion line if you have some with you. If not, there are stations available as well. To receive communion, approach wearing your mask, then extend both hands, palms up, far in front of you. Please keep your mask on as you say amen and remain still as I place the host in your hand. Once you have received a host, please step six feet to the side, remove your mask, consume, replace your mask, then sanitize your hands again. After receiving communion, you may either return to your pew for a brief prayer of thanksgiving, or we ask you to immediately exit the church through the north chapel doors or the gathering space doors. Please be sure to take any personal items with you. Bulletins are available at each of the exits. The bulletin can also be found on our website along with other news and announcements. Thank you for choosing to celebrate with us today. Please come back and worship with us again. Please stand and let us pray. May these gifts we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same Spirit whom you wondrously poured out on your apostles. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia.
to see.